It was a nice hot summer day in Woodlands as Little Bear was playing with his friends up on Pudding Hill. Okay, Owl, Little Bear said happily. It's your turn to seek. All right, Owl said as he lifted his wing up to his head before he began to count amongst a big oak tree. One, two. While Owl was counting up to ten, the others across the forest was hopping around to find a good hiding spot. Whack! Duck said in her hazily voice. I think this spot will be the best. Do you think, Little Bear? I do, Duck, Little Bear said as he helped her get into the large bush. Duck wanted to make use that as a hiding spot. Thanks, Duck said sincerely. Lee, you're welcome, Little Bear said with a wink. Meanwhile, Hen decided to hide herself in a hole in a rotting, of a rotting log as it fits her size quite well. Cat ran up a tree with his claws that were built for the type of maneuver. Emily hid behind a tree, giggling with joy, and Little Bear, Bear, Bear went down by a rushing riverbank. Nine, ten, Owl said, finish counting to ten. Ready or not, here I come. Owl proceeded to guide over Pudding Hill, looking high and low for any of his pals. His eyes were locked on the ni nice large bush before seeing our yellowish figure caught in the thick of it. I'm pretty sure leaves don't turn yellow in summer, Owl sarcastically said before landing to get a better closer look. Duck was trying to hold back her laughter as Owl kept on going with this funny, snarky comments. I'm pretty sure they don't laugh either, Owl said as he lifted up one side of the bush to reveal build a familiar looking duck. Ah, found you, duck, Owl said in confident, brossed voice. I guess so, duck said. Let's go find the others. One by one, they had found all their friends under a log, up a tree, behind a tree, and so forth. Well, apart from Little Bear, of course. Where's Little Bear? Cat asked. If he had some hiding spot somewhere inclusive from the rest of us, then I can't be the true champion of hide and seek. True, Owl said before correcting to his judgment. Hey, there's no champions in this little game of hide and seek. Well, there could be, Cat said, smiling cun cunningly. Well, that is not the point that matters. There's Hen bowled. Remember, we got to find Little Bear. She's right. Vamanos, Duck said in agreement. While the others were looking for him, Little Bear was in the amazement at like the location he was close to choose his hiding spot. The waterfall from above glimmered like diamonds on a, a skaven art board, while it flowed down to the riverbank with such an elegance before carefully moving on to a new day. I never knew Mother Nature could be really building up something as grand as this, Little Bear said to himself, reminiscing the detail of his true nature tro treasure trove. Woo! Owl exclaimed. He's inside that waterfall. While the others followed Owl inside the chute, hit their eyes locked into the scene around them. Everyone was glazing at the waterfall. Seductive looks. Whoa! Everyone said in a dismountsman, except for Little Bear. You really found a great hiding spot, Little Bear. Duck stuttered as she became overwhelmed. Lucy thinks, Emily said, listening attentively to what her, her porcelain doll had to say. This is a fine spot. Thanks, Little Bear said sincerely. To be honest, I nearly went blank. Each of them all had a good laugh, and of course they stood there and joined the view together. Later on that day, the gang had decided to lay in the fine, short, green grass, talking to some desire's son and talking about life in general. Today was a great day, Little Bear said, staring up at the blue covered furred sky above them. Lucy and I couldn't have agreed more, Emily said in agreement. You know, Duck said, when we were all all older and we have gone someplace new, will we still be friends? Both Emily and Little Bear all looked at each other and the rest of the group, become alerted of that comment. Of course, Cat yawned as he stretched his legs. I mean, when we all have got up and left the world. We will, Duck, Emily said. Even though we grow, move on to distant lands, grow up, have children of our own, our memories will still flourish forever. Till forevermore, Owl said, Ed, as he made a toast with an imaginary cup. To forevermore, said the rest of the crew, triumphantly with joy, hoping to not think about the dreadful day when it'll be coming knocking on the door. Speaking of toasts, Little Bear said in a hurry, I gotta get home for supper. Mother Bear is expecting me. Well, goodbye, Little Bear, Owl said. Goodbye, Little Bear, everyone else said. Bye, Hen, Owl, Emily, Lucy, and Cat. Little Bear's re excited. See you tomorrow. Little Bear ran home as quick as he could to get into the worried waiting family. Oh, do you think he'd be all right? Father Bear? Mother Bear asked with her husband in a hint of dread in her voice. Don't worry, Father Bear reassured Mother Bear. 
I think he's coming around the house right now. Besides, I don't think Little Bear would miss his favorite meal, fish soup. Now, now where would he be? I don't know, Mother Bear said as her attention slowly seized. Just then, then op Little Bear opened the door and jumped into Mother Bear's wide open arms. To not be noticed, Father Bear hid behind the door as he wanted to surprise his son. For you, you see, Mother Bear didn't tell the loved ones to return the Little Bear's desired wish, and that his Father Bear safely returns sooner than is he able to. On this very day, however, his wish finally came true. Mother Bear, Little Bear said, you will not believe what happened today. Aha, before you tell me, Mother Bear spoke, will you help me set the dishes on the table? I sure will, Mother Bear, Little Bear said proudly. While Little Bear was setting the dishes on the wooden table, Father Bear snuck up behind him and before he could put it upon his shoulder. Hello, Father Bear said in his smooth, deep voice, Little Bear. He took a look on Little Bear's face, and when he heard a familiar voice of tone, smoothly spoken words, that was to be wide I enjoyed. When he looked behind, it, behind him, he could see a big, bloated bear in the modern captain clothes, topped with an ocean blue cap. He resembles like likeness of his father. Father Bear, Little Bear said as he rushed to him with a big bear hug. Ugh, phew, Father Bear spoke with, with shock in his eyes. My, have you grown? Well, we have so much to discuss, Little Bear said. We'll be able to discuss all that is all need to be spoken of at the table. Mother Bear reassured Little Bear. We're having fish soup for supper. So don't be long, long gone. Nay, your food will turn cold. Just like the sea, Little Bear said in a joking manner. Yes, but way colder than, than Father Bear paused before or anybody could finish the statement. Windier, Mother Bear said as they had a good laugh. laugh. Now at the dinner table, all the parties were gathered forth spoke and one another were about their evening. So Father Bear, Mother Bear said looking up at her husband's hazel eyes. How's the tray with China coming along? Not good, my love, Father Bear said worriedly. We aren't able to come pro compromise this deal at all. China's fish market is spiraling out of control, and since we can't pull out fish from the fair waters no more, they would make a, a bribe with us. Nay, would they restrict, restrict fishing coasts. Then that would be uh, the bribe? Mother Bear asked sincerely. To take our fish from our streams and give it to them, Father Bear said. The only problem is that we would have to support our community country first before theirs. Plus, it could take up months for it to be delivered, and by then the fish would rot. I thought you had ice to freeze them in, Mother Bear asked. How would they rot? Obviously, the large large bags of ice wouldn't, wouldn't last a whole month in the warm sn of, the, of the slow sailing trip, my love. Love? Father Bear, Little Bear asked. How is the fish marking failing in a pan large panful place like China? Sorry, Little Bear, Father Bear said, realizing his error and explained how we went to new. The reason, Sin, sin or claim they speak of is that we have been fishing indentially in the waters, causing the fish to become less evident when it comes to the same. However, they don't have the evidence to back their story up, so we are pretty neck to neck with one another at the moment. Oh, Father Bear, Mother Bear said in a caring mother like, I don't think it's nothing major. I think you should admit him a bit be better if you take your mind off of it. I know you're right, Mother Bear, Father Bear said stressfully. But I have this feeling that something bad is going to happen if this continues, like a war of some sort, you know? Don't talk foolishly like that, Mother Bear snapped. I know my husband will be okay, and so will our family, and that's final. I'm sorry, dear, I... Mother... Father Bear said before getting cut off. No, I am. Mother Bear spoke with a large sigh. I shouldn't have yelled at you like that, nor for our child's sake. But to be honest, I'm a little scared myself. As the family quieted themselves for a brief minute or two, Little Bear decided to lighten up the worrisome evening. Guess what I did today? Little Bear asked his parents, trying to break the eerie, eerie silence of the room. What? asked Mother Bear and Father Bear. I was playing hide and seek when I came across this large waterfall, Little Bear said. How tall is it? Mother Bear asked, willing to know more about this wonderful day. Taller than me, Little Bear said jokingly. When we laid on the grass and then we had unique discussions about the everything to say the least. Now that would be the, what those talks contain, my bear cub, the father bear asked. You know, life in general, said mother, said little bear sadly. Like when we grow up and we ha leave each other, one another as friends. That's a long way ahead, mother bear said. You'll still have many years to come before that, my love. And, frank, and to be frank, we still love you just the way we are, no matter how far you're from us. 
Families will always come together, Father Bear said. I mean, look at Uncle Rusty. He lives in the deepest part of the woods all by himself, and he still comes here to, to here and visit us nearly every year. Not to forget your grandparents that live up the hill from here, Mother Bear chimed in. Families stick together no matter what happens, Mother and Father Bear said. Ed, thank you for those of the words of wisdom, Mother and Father Bear, said Little Bear with a bright smile on his face. I'm quite... I'm quite stuffed from this wonderful dinner before me, Mother Bear. Well, that's great, Little Bear. Mother Bear spoke. Why don't you hobble onto bed and I will read you a bedtime story? Oh, that'll be a splendid idea, Little Bear said with a yawn before heading off to his toy-filled room. I will be right back, Father Bear, Mother Bear reassured her husband while she's heading towards her son's room. Little Bear snugged up in his cozy blanket, await for his mother's return as he tapped his, his hand on his soft pillow covered in covered bed. Not long after he had entered his room, the door creaks open as Mother Bear popped in into the view. Now, what story should I read my one bear cub tonight? Mother Bear asked herself. Oh, I know. Once upon a time, there was a bear cub who played, played with his friends all day in the nice summer sun. While playing with their friends, they stumbled onto a grand waterfall and they took a sight around him. And then when his friends came across the waterfall too, they all took a moment together, and then they had a nice time laying in the grass, reminiscing about the wonderful life, life for the better. The end. That was a little... Mother Bear... Little Bear, Bear yawned as he faintly closed his eyes. Nice story, Mother Bear. Thank you, Little Bear, Mother Bear said as she kissed her son goodnight. Good night. Good night, Mother Bear, Little Bear replied. While she left the room, Father Bear and Mother Bear went to their own room, and they were getting into a more comfortable. I may add the appropriate set of clothes for them to sleep in. Father Bear, Mother Bear said to Father Bear, Are you going to be all right? I will, my love, Father Bear said to to Mother Bear. I've lear learned a lot, to, so not to worry about it. Enjoy my life and without fear. That's wonderful, dear, Mother Bear said before getting to bed. Listen, I'm sorry for getting mad at you again. It's okay, Father Bear said. At least we got each other, and that's all that matters. Not only for the little bear cub of our own. Well, good night, my love, Mother Bear said before blowing off the flame of her candlestick. Good night, Father Bear replied. When the rooster crowded over the fierce screech the next morning, Mother Bear was already making breakfast for, for two lovely boys. While she flipped through the scrumptious pancakes and humming the sound, song, My Bonnie, repe respectively, not long after, a little bear came out of his room, stretching his shoulders before asking where mo what, Mother Bear is Mother what, for, what's, what was for breakfast. We're having pancakes, Mother Bear stated. Would you like to help me make, make the, pan the cooking mix? Of course, little bear replied with no hesitation whatsoever. Will you have some pancakes yourself, dear? Mother Bear asked Father. Sure I will, Father Bear said as he slipped a, a cup of coffee after I read my Sunday newspaper. Yes, Mother Bear chuckled. We all know we love to read articles in the newspaper. Have fun with that. Thanks, love, Father Bear said. Meanwhile, Father, Mother, while Mother Bear and Little Bear, Bear had their fun full time in the kitchen, Father Bear read something alerted to his attention of many articles, articles huge, towering papers before him. The article was reading something like this. In regards conflict between two groups of fishermen from the western front of the United States and East Asia, residents of the People's Republic of China, the, the official communist party has declared war upon the United States and are prepared for a strike upon the withdrawal. There was hope for its situation, however, as the leader of the party, John D. Ho, was asked for a term, a term for all men of the sea to evenly split our borders with the limitless sea, see, in order to restrict restrain parties from entering the waters upon the great distance of our large established country. In complicance, we shall ease the nuclear warfare tonight towards the United States and furthermore make peace. However, this debate is still going to be or rather what's on the nearest what he needs. Sir William Bro, um, American ship had been about to say that it was an ongoing argument. To be sure we're not being bought out by Chinese, I think it'd be best if we keep fishing on our fair waters. The ocean should be at least limited this boundary of whom, whom they may have to take the right spots and everywhere for that sake. However, I do I do understand that they may think that we're taking a lot from them as fishing populations can ease over time from overfishing. Nay, do I do agree with this to be this case, but I believe that they might be needy on this subject as they were very close-minded with the passage 
past and is coming to terms before. The inquiry of what is happening off our coasts, it is recommended that you buy coming communication devices such as radios, televisions, and so forth to keep up with the future updates regarding this source of important information. Holy crap! Father Bear stuttered, worried about what he just read the previous before closing his mouth. Father Bear? Mother Bear stated in shock shock of what her husband bowed out. I'm ashamed you know that no to better than to talk right down in front of your son. And what's the matter with you? I'm so sorry, dear. Mother, Father Bear said in shocked, frightful voice. But I think you should take a look at this. While Mother Bear walked over to see what the trouble is, Little Bear was spiked with curiosity about the commotion beside him. Why is Father Bear acting strange? Little Bear asked himself. It must be because of the war they were talking about last night. Well, I know I can make this problem better. With a nice breakfast meal, they will be delighted on what I made for the both of them. Give me that, Mother Bear demanded as she swiped the newspaper out of her out of Father Bear's paws. Oh my goodness, Mother Bear said as she quickly read the newspaper before getting emotional. Oh no, Father Bear, what has the world gone to? And what about my m mother and father? I... Quiet, dear, Father Bear said in a calming voice. It's going to be all right. Look, I'm going to stop by the hardware store today and get a small pocket radio so we can keep in touch with the news. Yeah, and what if they do strike? Mother Bear said in hysterics. Riggs. What plan do you have for us then yet? Father Bear can only pause for a question as he, as he didn't think that would be the option for him. He can only stare at the emotionless with the fear of losing his family painting deep in his heart. And that, my little pretties, was The Little Bear When the Woods Fall Down, Part 1. A Little Bear Lost Episode Cree Pasta, written by Christian Lizette. Now, I am going to be honest before I start right now because um, when I first uh, uploaded the first video, I realized I forgot to put the review in. So, yeah, I do apologize for me having to, you know, forget to review it. But what I am going to say right now is that the story was actually really good. Now, there was a lot of great stuff I could definitely say that I liked about this story. Like, I'm going to be honest that the grammar is good. The sentence structuring was amazing. The paragraph structure worked very well. The flow of it was just amazing. Now, this is a really good for the first part, and I could definitely say that the that Christian Lizette, you did a really good job with the first part of the story, and I could definitely say why I exactly like this part. Now, this part was actually pretty good. Now, I do apologize for the little error that I did on the first video when I uploaded. Um, the Yeah, I do apologize for that because I forgot the review for it, so... Yeah, I really do apologize for that, but, you know, I fixed it, though, so we should be good. Okay. Now, I'm going to definitely say that this story was actually really good with the grammar, the sentence structuring, the paragraph structuring, everything about it of how it went out was just flat-out beautiful. It actually flowed out very well with the story, which I can definitely say that, you know, the story was actually really good in many ways. I could definitely say that this story actually did pretty good, even though uh, the story was actually really nice, dark at that, but at the same time, it's actually pretty cool. And I could definitely say, Christian Lizette, that I'm going to enjoy part two. I think part two is going to be pretty good too, and so is um, part three, which I remember seeing the first part of this in Shadow Reader's, um, in Shadow Reader's uh, old channel. Like, I remember him reviewing, you know, the whole... Thing, you know, the first two parts of, you know, the little bear story. And, you know, the first two parts are back up, by the way, under his new channel name, because we all know what happened to his old channel. So, yeah. But I could definitely say that this story did pretty good. Now, I'm going to be trying to keep the review as short as I possibly can, but this pasta was just amazing. Now, I cannot wait to read your, the second part of this story, Christian Lizette. I'm actually really enjoying it. I actually really like it. It was actually really nice. So, with that said, though, is there anything negative that I do have to say about the story? Uh, I can't say there's anything negative. Like, I cannot say anything negative about the story. The story was actually, you know, very well done. And it actually flowed well with the story, which I could definitely say that it did a really relatively good job. Now, is there anything else negative I have to say? Ah, uh, no, there isn't. So I could definitely say now that this story actually did pretty good. Now, however, though, 
I don't have anything negative to say about this story, so I could definitely say that this story actually did pretty good. And I can really say there was a lot of time and effort put into the story, which is good. So, in regards to this story, um, I... Oh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up, this review, before, you know, I end or anything. I'm going to be honest right now. Um, like I'm going to say right now, this is uh, simply my own personal opinion. And if you disagree with me, that's fine, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards these uh, creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating in this story would have to be a 10 out of 10. Everything about this went out beautifully. There's a lot of time and effort going into it. Good grammar, good storytelling, good everything about it. I love this story. Now, anyways, what did you all think about this curry pasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what would you have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Uh, thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're brand new here to this channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Uh, don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so you guys won't miss an upload. And like always, please roll the outro because I'm out of here. And I will be seeing you all in the next video. Peace.